The Honourable Member from Dauphin, Swan River, Nipawa. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I'm, uh, I'm already, I've already committed the uh, cardinal error of public speaking. Madam Speaker, I've already uh, uh, committed the cardinal, speak, uh, car cardinal error of public speaking, and that's following a terrific speech. And I want to thank my uh, colleague uh, for her wonderful uh, maiden speech. And she will be such a well, she is a welcome addition to the Conservative fa family in the House. And uh, I think we're all going to have to run like crazy to keep up with her, and that is very much a good thing. Uh, before I talk about uh, the subject at hand, I'd like to refer to something that came up in question period that quite vexed me. Uh, the member from uh, Prince uh, Albert talked about Ukraine, and uh, the government is crying crocodile tears for Ukraine. I remember in uh, November of 2014, I had the honour of accompanying the then Prime Minister to the G20 meeting in Brisbane, Australia. And at that particular meeting, uh, our Prime Minister at the time um, had to shake hands with, with Vladimir Putin. And he said to Mr. Putin, and this was quoted, I will shake your hands, and then he looked him right in the eye and said, and you get out of Ukraine. Can you imagine the group on the other side with the leader that they have ever doing such a thing, standing up for Canada, standing up for foreign, for, for, for principle? Yeah, he'll probably want to take a selfie. So I thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, in indulging me in bringing that, that up. Um, that up. As, uh, as well, the other side downplays the human tragedy that is occurring because of the economic downturn. And often um, anecdotes and personal experiences are as important or more important than, uh, than numbers and st statistics. There's a gas station just outside of Winnipeg that uh, as I drive back and forth between Winnipeg and my constituency that I often stop at. And I chat with the proprietor, we become friends, and uh, we were talking about the low price of gas, and he was actually quite worried about it. And I said, why? He said, every single day I have a person stopping at the gas station, a, fa a family, heading back home to the Maritimes. And I get a story from them. With the Alberta economy collapsing, these people have lost just about everything, and their only alternative, and the Maritimes are a wonderful part of the world to be sure, but they are economically stressed. These people have to pack up everything, leaving secure, well-paying jobs and having to, to, uh, to go back, back home, perhaps to live with mom and dad, and try to rebuild their, their lives. So the Liberal and NDP war on the resource industries, the war, and it's actually a war on rural communities as well, these have real and dire human consequences that we lose sight of uh, at our peril. In terms of um, the, oh, I just came across, um, in, in terms of the, uh, uh, what the uh, topic at hand, I would like to point out that the conservative approach is very much one of encouraging personal growth and development through the taxation and financial policy si systems that we have. Our goal is to make, is to ensure that people are as independent as they possibly can, they, they fulfill their ambitions, and they are allowed to chart their lives in a way that they choose. And government policies can encourage that kind of independence, or they can discourage it. As Conservatives, we firmly believe that government's role is to enable self-sufficiency, reduce the reliance on government, so people can chart their own course. And TFSAs are exactly in that mold. I hate to say it, but I think it's true and the record bears it out, that both the Lib Liberals and the NDP, on the other hand, they actually want more people dependent on government. I'm not sure, sure why, but the policies and programs that Liberal and NDP governments have put across at both the provincial and federal levels right across the country, what happens as a result of what they do, more and more people become dependent, de uh, dependent on government. And the creation of that kind of dependence creates grave, in my view, problems for society. Canadians have a lot of pride, and charting one's own path in life enhances that, that pride. And government has a role to provide mostly a hand up, as opposed to only a hand, hand out. And again, I'd like to bring in the uh, personal here. When we brought in our last budget with uh, income splitting, universal child care be benefit, and all those great benefits for fa families. I received an email from a single mother from the town of Swan R R River in my constituency, 
uh, Ms. McKenzie da Daynard, and she gave me permission to use, use her name. She wrote to us to thank us for our tax policies. And keep in mind, this is a single mother on very low incomes. She, she, she wrote me to say, and she, she says, this helps a lot for single parents, and this is because she's one of them. She also added, thank you for helping us raise our children. So much for the idea that conservative budgets are for the rich. And as I said in my speech yesterday, the Conservative Party, and the Conservative members of Parliament, we are the party and we are the members of Parliament for the working people of this country, and nobody should ever forget that. TFSAs are exactly in line with our philosophy in promoting independence, tax-free savings accounts. And again, uh, we believe uh, I'm not one who thinks government doesn't have a role in society. It certainly does, and I've never been shared to encourage the spending of uh, government resources in, on projects and programs that help pe people out. We certainly need tax uh, resources to uh, ensure the health of our society, but they should be kept at a minimum. And what a tax-free savings account did, and it's kind of like the companion to the RRSP, it helped people to become independent. TFSAs were open to all cit citizens over 18. And let's contrast this with the Canada Pension Plan, and many members opposite want to see the Canada Pension Plan co contributions increase. The Canada Pension Plan, in and of itself, is a pretty good pro program, but again, it's a matter of uh, de degree. But the TFSAs were and are very complementary to the Canada Pension Plan. And unlike the Canada Pension Plan, tax-free savings accounts introduce choice in how you invest your money and they also accumulate in your own personal account. If a person contributes to CPP, even an enhanced CPP, and they unfortunately happen to pass on before the eligibility date, there's nothing left for the fa family. At least with the TFSA, there is a legacy that is left that can be passed on to the next gen generation. And so I think the attacks on the tax-free savings uh, plans uh, are completely unwarranted. Unwarrant and again, my colleague that spoke before me uh, listed chapter and verse the number of groups across the country, seniors groups, and uh, I'm in the over 50 club. I'm in the over 60 club, if the truth be known, and that's as far as I'm going to go right, right now. So uh, the, my generation is strongly supportive of the approach that our government uh, put in place. And again, I'd like to go to the personal about TFSAs. Last year, May 13, 2015, in Hansard, uh, I quoted a constituent of mine who sent me an email, and her name was, and she again gave me permission to use her name, Ms. Wendy McDonald, who's a hard-working uh, wife from Newdale, Ma Manitoba. Her husband farms, and, they're, uh, uh, with, and they have ch children. And they happened to be able to visit, uh, they were visiting in Ottawa, and they said, quote, the reason we were able to afford our trip to Ottawa was due to our income tax refund, which was largely unex unexpected due to income splitting. Our family chooses to put the child care benefit money we receive directly into an RSP for our two ch children. I will be one of the Canadians that will benefit from the increased allowance on TFSAs because savings is important, saving is important to me, and this is important, and allows me to be fiscally responsible in my own household. Here we have a fat family, the McDonald's from Newdale, who are charting their own course in life, who are independent, saving money for their kids, saving money for their retirement, using the tools that our government put in place, the tools that the new government is trying to take, take away. And my last point regarding the so-called tax hike on the wealthy, basically a typical liberal NDP trait, always penalizing success, always envious of people who do, do well, always thinking that people who uh, succeed in life, uh, it, they're just lucky. No, actually, most people succeed in life because of hard work. Yeah, yeah. And governments should, be, should have policies in place that support and reward hard work. My very last point, I'll go to what my colleagues talked about earlier, I have in here the fiscal monitor from the Department of Finance, and it is very, very clear. For the April to November 2015 period of the 2015-16 fiscal year, the government posted a budgetary surplus of $1 billion. What could be more clear than, 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 than that? So our government left a financial legacy that I am very proud of, and it's a government that I was certainly proud to be a part of, and uh, in four short years, we will be back. Thank you very much.
Questions et commentaires, questions and comments. The honorable member from Canada, Carlton, is it? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, it is very important that we all understand the fiscal situation that we're actually in at the present time. The previous government had six consecutive deficit budgets from 2000 and 2008 to 2014. We do not count deficits in half-year portions. We count a, a budget year as a budget year, and every indication is that 2014 to 2015 will also be a budget deficit. The previous government added $150 billion in additional debt to our national debt. They oversaw the loss of 400,000 good-paying jobs in manufacturing and heavy industry, and now a further 70,000 jobs in the oil sector. The previous government did a, made a mess of our economic system. We have a lot of work to do. We've committed to doing that work, and we're going to do it for the majority, the best majority of Canadians. Thank you. The Honourable Member from Dauphin Swan River, Nippewa. Some mess. The OECD consistently rated Canada as the best economy in the world under our government. Yeah. And the, the, uh, the so-called deficits that she talked about back in the day, I, re I was part of the minority government for a little while. And the whining from the Liberals and the NDP in that minority years, their basic complaint was that we didn't spend enough. My last point, uh, Madam Speaker, is Paul Wells wrote an article that's in National News Watch, and in a very quick summary, he says, this government's first 100 days, some patterns have been set. Ministers talk to media anonymously, afraid to be quoted. Trouble abounds and surrounds, from free-falling oil to terrorism to shots in the feet. The Liberal government faces both external and self-inflicted woes. Has the government melted down so fast in so short a time? I don't think so, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments, questions et commentaires. The Honourable Member from Cowichan, Malahat, Langford. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I appreciate the, my honourable colleague's comments to this House and his speech, and I, he certainly is defending the Conservative viewpoint quite well. He's made some interesting comments about how the Liberals and the NDP think about hard work. So I will uh, bring the, the tone of debate up a little bit and ask him if he will support our notion to reward hard work by supporting an increase to the federal minimum wage to $15 an hour. Because, Madam Speaker, when I worked as a constituency assistant to a member of parliament for seven years, I met so many families that are working tons of hours, way more than 40 hours a week just to get by, and they can't do it on the provincial minimum wages. So will he join us in supporting some real leadership with a federal minimum wage of $15 an hour so the Canadians who are working can get ahead. Thank you. Here, here. The Honourable Member from Dauphin Swan River, Nippewa. Thank, thank you, Madam Speaker, and I certainly appreciate the member's sen sentiments, but certainly I, uh, also, I do not appreciate the lack, his lack of understanding of economics. Study after study has shown that as, as minimum wages rise, jobs are, are lost, and all one has to do is go to a supermarket these days, and the automated uh, uh, checkouts that are in place now, they're there for a reason. Now, what a government needs to do is put in place policies and programs for example, that enhance the natural resources se sector and create those high-paying jobs that under this Liberal government are sadly being lost by the thousands. Questions and comments? Questions et commentaires? The Honourable Member from Prince George, Peace River, Northern Rockies. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I miss, Madam Speaker, it's, we haven't said that for a while, have we? <laughs> uh, but I'd just like to thank my colleague for his speech. Uh, but, you know, I, I listen to the Liberals uh, across the way, especially the member from Toronto that tries to play a bit of a shell game with where we're at uh, financially, especially when the Conservatives uh, handed over the government to, to the Liberals. Uh, and I don't see how they can uh, keep doing that, uh, playing that game, because uh, we see documents even today, it's, it's obviously a $1 billion surplus, and that's what you receive. That's the fact of the matter. That's what your government is telling Canadians. That's a fact. And yet, the members across the way try and still hide behind the, 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 the shell game and trying to say something different. So I'd just like to, the member to clarify, uh, were we in surplus or deficit uh, after the last election? I also uh, just want to remind the member that he's to address the question to the chair and not directly to the, the, the government. And when you're speaking, you can't be saying your, gov your government and pointing at them. 
Okay. Thank Matt, you very Matt much. Speaker, and the honourable uh, member from Dauphin, Swan River, and Nippewa, a very brief uh, sure. answer. Uh, Madam Speaker, our uh, financial plan worked per perfectly in November. Uh, sorry, in 2008, we did what we had to do with the concurrence of the other pa parties. We spent on infrastructure. The plan by the late uh, Jim Flaherty, the finance min minister, was at that point to gradually reduce the deficit. And tw in 2014-2015, the deficit was to be at zero or we were going to be in a small su surplus. And that plan worked to perfection. That is exactly what happened. You can look at the graph. And again, the fiscal monitor from the Department of Finance today in black and white, we, uh, we left this government a surplus. Period.